sa inyong lahat. Magandang tanghali, magandang gabi. Saan man kayong dako ng daigdig naroroon sa mga pagkakataong ito. Sumapit na tayo sa Martes Santo. My reflection is a little bit long. I hope you will have the patience to listen. It is the Holy Week anyway, and today is Holy Tuesday. Believe it or not, my dear brothers and sisters, in this big chapel, shrine of Jesus the Divine Word, there are only, how many are we? One, two, three, four. There are only four of us. That's life. Betrayal. Treachery. How does it feel to be betrayed by a friend? Have you ever experienced being betrayed by a friend or even by a family member in one way, in one form, or another in the past? I'm sure you have heard of the infamous saying, Keys of Judas, Ang Halik ni Judas, that personifies betrayal that personifies treachery. My dear brothers and sisters, the name of Judas Iscariot is synonymous with betrayal. It is synonymous with treachery. The term treachery is synonymous with the name of Judas. Last night before I went to bed, tiningnan ko sa dictionary kung ano ang ibig at ano ang pagkakaiba ng betrayal at treachery. Ang Tagalog sa betrayal ay ipinagkanulo, traidor. Ang Tagalog sa treachery ay pandaraya, pagtataksil, panglilinlang at hindi mapapagkatiwalaan. Judas Iscariot must have been a good actor. Judas Iscariot must have been a perfect hypocrite. All the time, Judas had been putting on an act of love, an act of loyalty that must have deceived everybody except Jesus. Judas was not only a bare-faced villain, Judas was a swab hypocrite. There is a lesson for us here. We can fool some people some of the time, but we cannot fool all the people all the time. And certainly, we can never fool God any time. I'd like to proceed by sharing with you because I find it interesting to view the sitting arrangement of Jesus and the apostles during the Last Supper at the Last Supper table. I'd like to share with you how the Last Supper table looks like. The position of Judas at table will give us an insight into his character, into his personality. Do you know that the Jews did not sit at table? The Jews reclined at table. They did not sit at table. A typical Jewish dining table was a low, solid block. And there are couches around it. The shape of the table is usually U-shaped and the host occupies the center seat. The apostles <coughs> reclined on their left side and they are resting on the left elbow. Why is this so? Because they will get food from the table using their right arm. 
the right hand is left free to get food at table. Sitting in such a way, a person's head was literally at the breast of the person reclining on his left. Nakikita ba ninyo? Nakaganyan. So whoever is on my left, I am reclining practically on the breast of that person. Jesus was sitting in the place of the host. The disciple whom Jesus loved, the gospel describes as the somebody whom Jesus loved, must have been seated on the right side of Jesus. For as that disciple was leaning on his elbow on the table, the head of the disciple whom Jesus loved was resting on the breast of the Lord. The general opinion has always been that the beloved disciple is no other than John the Evangelist. But it is the place of Judas that is of special interest to us here. It has been said that Jesus could speak to Judas privately without the others overhearing their conversation. If that is the case, there is only one place. There is only one seat that Judas could have been occupying. Judas must have been on the left side of the Lord so that just as John's head was at the breast of the Lord, the head of Jesus was at the breast of Judas Iscariot. The revealing thing is that the place on the left of the host was the place of highest honor. It was kept for the most intimate friend. When the Last Supper began, Jesus must have said to Judas, Judas, come, sit beside me on my left tonight. Be my special guest. I need to talk to you personally. And Judas liked it because he felt very important. Judas felt he was deeply honored. But there is more. For Jesus to offer Judas a special morsel from the dish was again a sign of special friendship. When Jesus handed the morsel to Judas again, it was a sign of special affection. Judas had been picked out for special affection. But there is the tragedy here. Jesus repeatedly appealed to the dark heart of Judas. But Judas also repeatedly remained callous and unmoved. And suddenly, the crucial moment came. It was the moment when the appeal and love of Jesus admitted defeat. Judas, hurry on what you propose to do. Do not procrastinate, Judas. If it was to be done, do it now. Do it quickly. Do it swiftly. And the other apostles did not notice anything unusual. They simply thought that Jesus was dispatching Judas for a special assignment. And when Judas received the morsel, the devil entered his heart. The devil is capable of taking the loveliest things and twist them until they become the angels, the agents of hell. The devil can take love and turn it into hatred. And John, the gospel writer, or rather Judas, I'm sorry, Judas 
went out of the room. And the gospel writer John said, It was evening, evening. It was night because the day was late. But there was another night here. And listen, it is always night when a person goes from Christ to follow his own personal agenda and pursue his own selfish interests. It is always night when a person listens to the call of Satan. It is always night when a person refuses to heed the call of good. It is always night when a person turns his back on God. My dear brothers and sisters, Christ is the light. If we submit ourselves to Christ, we walk in the light. If we turn our backs on Christ, we go into the dark. The way of light and the way of darkness are set before us. I always feel like comparing Judas Iscariot with Simon Peter because in the Gospel today, Simon Peter is also mentioned. Judas betrayed Jesus. Simon Peter denied Jesus even with promises or curses. I do not know him. What then is the difference between Judas Iscariot and Simon Peter? The betrayal of Judas was deliberate. It was conscious. It was premeditated. It was carried out in cold blood. It was the result of careful thought and planning. But the threefold denial of Peter was originally never meant to take place. It was a moment of weakness on the part of Peter. The will of Peter may be weak, but his heart was always in the right place. My dear friends, our Lord knew the impulsiveness and the instability of Peter. But deep in Peter's heart, he loved the Lord. He was loyal to Jesus until the end. Judas Iscariot, until the end of his life, probably did not regret what he did. But Peter, Simon Peter, allowed himself to return to the Lord. All the apostles, they became missionaries, except Judas Iscariot, because he opted to turn traitor to the Lord. Amen.